Hello and welcome to my guide to gearing up a character in Warlords of Draenor. This guide is mainly going to be focused on PvE, however I will have a short PvP section. If there are any other elements of the expansion that you require a little bit of help with, then check out my channel because I will have a bunch of guides on loads of different topics, including things like the garrison. Now then, let's move on to the first part of this guide, which is the pre-heroic dungeon stuff. Now, I'm going to assume that you're starting off at roughly item level 600, i.e. you've just finished your questing in the ground. Now, you may actually be a little bit higher than 600 if you have the Dwarven Bunker building in your garrison. You see, the Dwarven Bunker actually doubles your chance of one of your quest items procking to be either a rare or an epic item, and it will also increase the potency of said proc. So, depending on how things go, you might be starting off at a pretty decent item level already. So, first of all, if you need a good weapon, then you can get a item level 610 weapon by completing the Bronze Proving Ground quest from your Garrison Mission NPC. Of course, weapons are very important, so it's just nice to get something solid in the weapon slot. Now, speaking of Garrisons, it's time to cover the Garrison Missions. You're going to want to do a lot of Garrison Missions, and in order to do that, you will need to gear up as many followers as you can as fast as possible. Once a follower is level 100, their item level can be increased using items that come from missions, the salvage yard, or the work orders from the bunker slash war mill. Once your followers are geared up to a high item level, you will be able to access harder missions that will award dungeon gear, heroic dungeon gear, and even some raid quality gear, like some really, really good stuff. This will help you out quite a bit, so you will want to constantly do work orders from the bunker slash war mill in order to get those upgrades. And then of course, just, you know, the salvage yard and all that stuff, and basically get these guys as leveled up as you can and as geared up as quick as possible. You will need your followers at item level 645 in order to do the missions that will give you high mall raid gear. Now, the gear that's awarded by these missions depends on the level of raiding that you normally do. If you don't raid at all, I believe you will get normal gear. If you raid normals, you will get heroic gear. And if you raid heroics, you will get mythic gear. Finally, if you raid mythics, then you will get mythic gear from these missions plus a thousand gold. So really, there's a lot of reward there for everyone, and it's absolutely worth focusing on your followers. Now, there will be some missions for item level 630 followers that will award item level 645 randomized gear tokens that will match your loot spec. So basically, Timeless Isle, Burden of Eternity styled stuff. It's really important that you maintain a wide range of followers though, because many of these missions require quite a lot of traits. In fact, those raid missions require six different traits on your followers to get a high success rate. So you really do need to just focus on the followers. Now, the inn will also give you daily dungeon quests. I'm pretty sure it's two a day, with one of them being more of a, like, vanity item sort of thing, and uh, the other one being something that's a bit more throughput related. For an example, you can get a mission that involves, or a quest that involves just, you know, killing something or collecting an item in a certain heroic dungeon, and when you get back, you'll get a bag as a reward, and that bag can contain even more dungeon gear. So if you're doing dungeons, then be sure to pick up these quests and do that specific quest dungeon every day. Now, there are also garrison invasions, and the way these work is that a bunch of orcs or whatever kind of enemy will attack your garrison, and depending on how well you do, you'll get points. You get points by killing enemies and just by completing these little, like, mini-objectives that pop up. It's all, like, pretty self-explanatory, and the game actually teaches it to you. Now, you get three different medals, um, either bronze, silver, or gold, depending on how well you do. And if you get a gold medal, then you'll get a bag at the end. Now, this bag can contain a 645 helm, shoulder, boot, or weapon. So, that's pretty good. They can also contain mounts, so yeah, it's, it's a nice reward. However, getting a gold may be tricky enough at lower gear levels, and you can bring friends with you. It's definitely recommended that you bring some friends and do these once a week, which is the maximum you can do. And hopefully you'll get some 645 gear. In addition to this, there is also the Apexis Shard system. Now, you'll get Apexis Shards from doing the Daily Garrison quest. These shards are used to purchase gear that starts off at item level 630, which is heroic dungeon quality, and they can then be upgraded to item level 645, and then 655. Just be sure to run these quests every single day. You can also get Apexis Shards from some of the missions that your followers can do, and work orders at level 100 can contain a small number of Apexis Crystals. So make sure to do loads of missions, and then as well, do as many work orders as you can. 
The item level 645 Apex's Crystal stuff will only be available when High Mall unlocks, and the 655 stuff will only be available when Blackrock Foundry unlocks, so there's no need to worry about that stuff immediately, all you have to do is just fill in some 630 slots. Now, if you do want to eventually use that 645 and 655 stuff, then you will need to buy the 630 stuff. You see, the way this gear works is that you buy the first bit, and then you trade in the second bit, plus a bunch of Apexus shards for the second bit, and then you trade in that, plus a bunch of shards for the third bit. Overall, it is a rather expensive process though, so you do want to make sure that every day you do that mission. Now, there is also crafted gear in this expansion. Item level 640 crafted armor can be made by anyone with the correct garrison building, so even if you are not a leather worker, you could still put down a tannery and make some 640 crafted gear. Now this armor can actually be upgraded to item level 655 and then 665, but this is only done by people who have the relevant crafting profession on their character. So, as I said, if you are not a leather worker but have a tannery, you can make 640 stuff, but you would need to be a leather worker if you wanted to upgrade that 640 stuff to a higher item level. The initial cost of this gear is actually rather hefty. It costs a fair amount of your rare crafting resource, plus some common materials. This rare crafting resource is made through your daily crafting cooldown on your profession and the garrison work order. So what you want to do is just do these garrison work orders as soon as possible so you can access the item level 640 stuff. This will just really help you out if you um, start doing it early on. Now this gear can be bought and sold on the AH, so don't worry if you don't want to craft it, though I'd imagine that at the start of the expansion, it will be rather pricey. Now in addition to all this, you can only equip three pieces of this crafted gear, so I recommend focusing on the high value slots. Also, the crafted cloak does not count towards this three piece set, so I recommend getting that as well. Now there are also crafted weapons in this expansion. These start off at item level 630, and can then be upgraded to item level 640 and 655, but only by people with the relevant crafting profession. So for an example, if you were, say, a warrior, you could build the forge, then create a item level 640, well, three bits of item level 640 gear, and then a 630 weapon, and that's what you could do with the forge only. If you have blacksmithing as well, then you could upgrade all that stuff. Now, if you do want to do those upgrades, then you will need these items called Savage Bloods, these are got with the level 3 barn, and I believe they can be bought and sold on the auction house as well. Okay, next we've got PvP gear. So there's honor gear, which is item level 620 that boosts up to 675 in PvP. It's pretty crap for PvE, however, near the start of the expansion, it could plug one or two holes with, um, you know, just bad quest gear or something like that. Then the conquest gear is item level 660 and boosts to 690. So it's pretty decent in PvE, however the downside is that it's only available once the PvP season begins, which is on the 2nd of December. Still though, if you like doing a bit of both, then that Conquest gear is actually going to serve you pretty well in a PvE scenario. There are also BOE World Drops in Warlords of Draenor, these are item level 665. Good luck getting them though, because of course they're pretty rare and... Well, you're likely to maybe find them in the auction house, but again, I think they'd be extremely expensive. Still, 665 is a very high item level, so if you can afford it, then by all means, these are very powerful. Now, there are also world bosses in Warlords of Draenor, however, these actually release with the raids. I know that the first two, which give you item level 640 gear, come out with High Mall, which might be a bit strange because High Mall LFR gear is actually 640. Now, there's also Rukmar, who will come out with Blackrock Foundry. Now, Rukmar has got um, item level 665 gear on him, so definitely worth killing him, but yeah, world bosses are definitely nerfed in comparison to how they were throughout much of Mists of Pandaria. Let's talk about the legendary quest. You want to get started on this as soon as you possibly can, especially because it will involve doing some normal dungeons at the start. This will rather quickly give you an item level 640 ring, for the normal dungeon stuff, and then a 680 ring for completing the heroic dungeon stuff. Now, there are datamined 690 and 710 versions of this ring, which are probably linked to the High Mall and Blackrock Foundry raids. The reason why I say you should start this early is because you'll be running those dungeons anyway, so it's just a good idea to kill two birds with um, one stone. 
Now, while all this stuff up here is good, it can take a little bit of time, so if you are sitting around at item level 600 and you just want to gear up pretty quick, then of course, doing normal dungeons, uh, you know, will get you, get you up pretty quick. So, basically, chip away at all those crafting things, do some normal dungeons, and then you will be eligible to do heroic dungeons. And that is the second part of this guide. So now that the early gearing has been talked about, let's just cover what will happen once you have access to heroics. First of all, heroic dungeons will give you item level 630 gear. However, these bits of gear can end up being Warforged 638 pieces. Now that's nearly as powerful as high mall LFR stuff from heroic dungeons, which is certainly quite a good thing in my opinion. Do bear in mind though, that these heroic dungeons are available from launch, whereas high mall is going to open up on the 2nd of December slash the 9th of December for the first wing of the LFR. Now, the Warforged mechanic means that you might want to chain run as many heroic dungeons as you can in order to try to get these Warforged procs. This might get very grindy, but of course, there is the potential for upgrades. Now, moving on from that, we have got challenge modes. You can do challenge modes once you're item level 630 because that is the item level that the challenge modes will start scaling up from. Now, it's best to do these with a guild, as they will be quite hard initially. While the content does scale from 630 onwards, the lack of well-itemized gear and sockets at the very start of the expansion will make it rather tricky. Now, there is a daily quest that you get from the Challenger NPC who is outside the tavern in your faction's Ashran base. This quest will give you a little, like, box at the end, and this little box can contain item level 640 LFR quality gear, which is very good. Again, bear in mind, LFR opens on the 9th of December, whereas you can do these challenge mode dungeons from the very start. Now, of course, all that stuff that I described about the garrisons, crafting, and Apex's crystals still applies to this part of the guide. This stuff is all going to take quite a while, so while you should start doing it immediately, it may be a good few days until you start to see the rewards from that. During those few days, just run some dungeons and um, eventually run some heroics challenge modes, and then you're really going to be in a pretty good place. Now, post item level 640, the only stuff that is of a higher gear level is either the upgraded crafted gear, upgraded crafted weapons, or upgraded Apexis shard gear, or the raid items that of course come from anything that's LFR or above. So really, once you hit 640, you're on to the raiding scene. And this guide is mainly talking about just gearing up initially and getting all that stuff done. Because of course, once you're raiding, well, you just keep on raiding. That's the way that it goes. Alright, so finally in this guide, I'm just going to summarize what I think you should be doing every day. Of course, this part of the guide is really about maximizing your potential, so if you don't want to spend this much time, you don't have to, and you can just do the stuff that you find interesting. Now, first of all, even before level 100, constantly send followers on missions, especially on the high XP patrol missions that are unlocked through your barracks. Then you will also want to get as many follower item level upgrades as possible, through the salvage yard and the bunker slash war mill. On top of this, once you hit level 100, you will want to do the daily Apexis Crystal mission and any weekly story quests that you might get. Also, at level 98 slash, I think it's, yeah, it's 98 that you unlock the legendary quest, do that. The legendary quest is, um, it'll just appear on a NPC in your garrison, so you'll know about that when it happens. Also, working on crafted gear is nearly essential to gearing up quickly, especially since this stuff can, can be upgraded to such a high item level eventually. Get a gear or weapon crafting building as soon as possible and ensure that from the get-go there are always work orders going. Now, if you are under item level 615, then just run as many dungeons as you can. If you are under 630, then do as many heroic dungeons as you can. And if you are under 640, do as many of those daily challenge mode quests as you can and continue to run heroic dungeons in order to get the Warforged upgrades. Past this, you will want to raid at whatever level you can while still trying to get your crafted gear, Apexis crystal gear, and then, of course, the stuff from your garrison. Raiding is certainly the quickest way to get gear in Warlords of Draenor post-item level 640. However, do, you know, do bear in mind that if you don't raid, you'll still be able to get a rather high item level by paying attention to crafted gear, Apexis crystals, and the garrison missions. Also, do remember that bonus rolls are still a thing in Warlords of Draenor. You can get one of your three um, bonus roll tokens per week from the Dwarven Bunker slash War Mill. That's pretty handy. Now, the other two are obtained by doing repeatable quests from a NPC in the Horde or Alliance Ashran Faction City. And of course, anytime where there isn't an NPC in this guide, I will put a little map up on the screen to let you know where it is. 
So really, that's it. That's how you're going to be gearing up your character in Warlords of Draenor patch 6.0. I will do updated versions of this guide as future patches come out so that the latest information is always available. And if you want to check out my video in which I explain all the Warlords of Draenor item levels right up to, I think, 690, then I will link that in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the guide useful. There's a few other hopefully useful guides on the channel if you want to check that stuff out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.